Hey guys, welcome back to this wonderful series between our pink Protoss player, Fnatic MSI's TT1, and our blue Zerg player, Dong Regu. This is a best of five series from IEM New York, which was going on the same weekend as MLG, which was very perplexing to me, and it held players like Dong Regu out of MLG. Um, but I don't know, it was, it's kind of a weird situation. Basically, MLG is the larger event, I believe. And I wanted to cast some games from IEM. This is from the first round of IEM. And you can catch all the other games if you just search for IEM, uh, New York, and Google, or whatever. You'll be able to find those VODs for all the other matches. I just wanted to do this sort of as a promotional thing. And to, of course, show some, some cool games to my subscribers. So if you want more cool games and tutorials and stuff, and you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and I will I promise you I will bring you a lot of very helpful and very cool stuff what we're seeing out of TT1 so far is he's showing forge expand which on Zelnaga Caverns can be a little hard because of how far away your nexus plot is from your ramp so it usually requires a forge a gateway and cybernetic score but doesn't quite reach and it's a huge amount of surface area that you have to cover with cannons and whatnot instead of gateway units so I try it, but a lot of times I get all in from Zergs, and it can be kind of hard to hold. But Dongregu, whoops, is going to go ahead and take his pool. At the meantime, start mining gas. He's not going to go for anything crazy like a uh, hatchery first, which is very prone to uh, something like a cannon block or, you know, cannon rush or whatever. But it looks like TT1 is actually going to Nexus first on 17 supply, which could not be any more ballsy. Uh, especially since he saw the p saw the pool coming up. Typically, you can go Nexus first in this kind of situation, but you usually want to go on something like 15 supply rather than 17, considering Zerglings can be out and attacking you before your your cannon would finish. So this is going to be really tight. Instead, Dongregu lucky break here for TT1. Dongregu starts a queen first, and only pair of Zerglings in the second pair is a little bit behind. So every second here matters. TT1 is going to want to drop a cannon and his gateway as soon as he has the available minerals. So we're waiting for that to come. He's now supply blocked, obviously, at 18 out of 18 supply. Waiting for his second pylon to finish, which it just did. I just heard it behind the mineral line, as we can see there. So his gateway should be coming up. He should plop a cannon down as soon as possible. Nope, he looks like he placed it in the wrong position. And uh, he does replace it. So he will want to also get a gateway up here, just so that if the Zerglings directly attack, that cannon went straight for it. That would help. Here's another thing you guys can do. TT1 did drop a pylon here to block the hatchery, which will usually attract the attention of these Zerglings. So it'll buy just a little more time killing that pylon before the Zerglings can run straight down to your base. So that's why a lot of these Nexus first builds can work, is because the Zerglings are too busy killing off your pylon rather than worrying about coming in here and doing a lot of damage. So uh, it's a very nice build so far from TT1. The Cybernetic Core, or rather no, excuse me, Second Gateway is going to be coming up here. Cybernetic Core would typically uh, plug this hole so he may cancel that gateway but he may also go for something like a quick zealot push here to punish a greedy zerg but Dongregu is continuing to rally zerglings so this could get a little messy in a, a little bit of a strange battle between cannons and zealots and stuff down here at TT1's base if Dongregu is aggressive with these zerglings which there's no real reason not to be hatchery is about halfway done but he can just pressure behind this and make TT1 pay for that risky expansion. So here come the Zerglings in right now. The cannon is done. You want to hold position on these probes if you can to protect this cannon for as long as possible. And that cannon should be totally fine with the help of these probes. Or not. It looks like TT1 just missed a little bit of time on those on those probes. So uh, Dongregu does kill that one cannon and can now start picking at pylons and picking at probes. This is a terrible spot for TT1 to be in, but he is putting out a couple of zealots to deal with this. Behind this, Dongre is just going to go ahead and drone up and accept the damage that he's doing as being uh, relevant enough. Here come the probes. They're just kind of dancing around back and forth, trying not to engage those Zerglings since they will lose that fight. The pylon gets canceled since the power for it was gone. The zealots are now coming out, but TT1 supply blocked. The Zerglings get into the main. They're going to do a lot of damage to these probes. The probes really need to be careful. They're trying to go for a surround, but Dongregu is too smart to allow that to happen. Bunching up once again. Uh, so these Zerglings are doing a lot of damage. The two zealots are out. Should put an end to this quite a bit. But that was pretty brutal. Uh, just a little bit of Zerglings coming in there and denying a lot out of TT1. The Zerglings are trying to get away. TT1 trying to block him off, and no, he just has a tiny little gap through. So Zerglings can still continue to run around and get scouting information for as long as possible. 
There's a Roach Warren now coming up here for Dongregu in the background of all of this, as well as the third hatchery, if you can see right here on the minimap. Uh, so, yeah, this is uh, another game of TT1 getting pinned back in his base by Dongregu Aggression. Probe's trying to come out here. They do catch a couple of Zerglings. As you can see, those ones dying. He's just trying to whittle this down just a little bit. Uh, but checking the look at the income tab, it's now even workers, and TT1 has missed a lot of mining time. So the four roaches are now coming out knowing that he should get some decent angles here on the Nexus or on the gateways that are out of cannon range. And since there's only zealots on the field to deal with those roaches, he could get a lot done with those. So five roaches now on the way. Dongregu is being so aggressive in this series. Um, yeah, that's a really unfortunate spot for TT1 to get put into, but I guess it was his own fault for being fairly risky with the Forge Expand opener and then following it up with a Nexus first. That's a very, very risky. Uh, here comes the Zerglings bugging him once again. The Roaches are now out and scuttling their way across the field. There's a few Zealots on the field as well, but they're just walking right past the Roaches. They're going to go try to deny the third. TT1 could be in a lot of trouble. There is a cannon finishing here at the front, which should help. But the Roaches can still get an angle and basically zone out this entire side of the Protoss base and not allow those Zerglings, or rather not Zerglings, these probes to mine very well off those side mineral patches, which is actually a pretty big deal at this stage of the game. Roaches are just going to go behind. There's one cannon there, but the Roaches can focus it down quite easily. You can see them win that fight easily. But the probes are now going to get us around on there. The Roaches are just going to have to poke their way out the best they possibly can. You can see the battle going on, and Roaches are just whacking probes to death. Uh, TT1 losing a lot here. The expansion is going to go down, but no, the Zealots lose focus and start fighting the Roaches instead. So TT1, oh, he might still get the hatchery. Yes, he does. Not enough energy on the Queen to transfuse, so at least he did take out the third of Dongregu, but he is really hurting right now. He's lost a lot of probes. Take a look at that. 17 workers lost during all this harassment, and that is effectively the supply difference right now. Uh, here's another Zergling trying to come in here and bug TT1. TT1's, he's holding okay, but he now has three cannons down, and he's lost this cannon twice, as well as a couple of pylons back here. So if you look at the resources lost, TT1's behind, and he's been mining less. So he's in a pretty rough spot right now. He's going to have to make something happen that's very miraculous to come back in this game. Dongregu is looking spectacular. Look at this uh, creep spread now starting to emerge out on the map. Uh, and his third is now going to be established here in just a second, whereas TT1 is just having a hard time saturating his only two bases. Checking a look at the worker count again, it's 5144 in favor of Dongregu, so not as far ahead as you would think, but uh, Dongregu still has a decently sized uh, economy and, and tech and stuff to fall back on. His lair is up. He's going for two more hatcheries, which look like macro hatches. There's one here, and uh, where's the second one? I'm not sure. Zerglings do get cleaned up in the main, nevertheless. The second one is... It must be just the one finishing up here at the natural. Yes, it is. Okay. Look at Dongregu. Eight creep tumors, nine creep tumors all in the way at the same time. Just spreading himself out as far as he possibly can with that creep. So if he keeps that up in the next three or four minutes, he should own about this half of the map. Uh, all the way down to basically the watchtowers. And that's pretty bad for TT1 to get stuck uh, back in his base like that. Here comes a warp prism out of TT1. As we can see it coming out of the robotics... Plus one attack on the way, and he's going to be at six gateways here very soon. So pops possibly just going to try a two-pronged attack, try to dizzy uh, Dongregu just a little bit, maybe even use some force fields here to block the ramp and kill some tech off or something. But TT1 really needs to make something very, very cute and very sneaky happen. Here's the robotics bay, or essentially the Colossus bay coming down now. Um, I'm not sure what he's going to load into this warp prism. It's still just sitting here. There's also an observer coming out. It's going to be four sentries, so he may actually go for that ramp block if he can get that in there. It's just having to avoid all the sight of Dongregu. And these Zerg this Zergling might actually see the warp prism. Oh, it does. So that is horribly unfortunate for TT1 once again. Uh, he's going to try and fly over uh, the sides of the map and just drop his sentries in right here and ramp block and then six gate from right there. Here comes a bunch of roaches pressing into the natural expansion of TT1. I'm not even sure that this gateway army can handle these roaches in a straight up fight anyway, so it's going to be some very nice force fielding required here. Here's uh, some more warpins here on the side. And we can see that uh, the roaches are just kiting these zealots the best they possibly can. Burrow comes out, but TT1 does have observation, so fortunate enough for him at this point. Still losing a lot of zealots, though. Here's the sentry drop. As we can see, it, he's actually just dropping on the mineral line, trying to trap in some uh, workers here and get some free worker kills. Look at these beautiful force fields. 
<laughs> Don Ragu smartly burrows his uh, probes. He needs to load up his warp prism and get out of there as soon as he can, and he does. So, yeah, just Don Ragu is just turning TT1 away at every pass. Uh, he's still maintaining about a 25 supply lead, and man, it is freezing in my house. My toes are getting cold. Uh, nevertheless, look at the amazing creep spread here out of Dongregu, kind of falling off just a little bit. Uh, if you're Zergen, you can find the time. Just double click your creep tumors, uh, click your creep tumor button, and just spam them out as soon as you possibly can. Just so keep spreading it. You can see that's what Dongregu does exactly. So here comes the roaches and zerglings pressing up through the middle of the map. There's now 12 mutas on the way as well as we kind of overlook the spire starting and getting down. But uh, this is going to be a very vicious follow up once again out of Dongregu. These mid-game mutalisks are really hard to deal with. Here comes the engagement just a little bit. No force fields quite yet. He does force field out a lot of these roaches. So these zealots are going to get as much done as possible. The roaches just burrow underneath the force fields and walk away. There's now one Colossus on the field. Thermal Lance is not quite done yet. TT1 needs more stalkers in this composition to deal with those mutas. Here comes a couple of mutas lost for free. So that's unfortunate for Dong Regu so far. Uh, the Warp Prism is now moving out once again. But the mutalisks are going to intercept it as we can see it will go down not actually doing very much at all. Here comes Dongregu's, or not Dongregu, this here comes CT1's push. Uh, Dongregu knows exactly what's going on here in the main. The Mutas may just bypass this army as well as the rest of it, so we may see a weird base trade going on. Uh, TT1 is just trying to engage the third and kill it as, as quickly as possible. Dongregu just evacuates. He has another hatchery starting on the right side. Two things going on at once here. The probes are trying to fight the roaches and zerglings along with the cannons the best they possibly can along with warpins here. The third does not actually die, so TT1 just walks away. Okay, he does leave a few units back here to deal with that, but TT1 has to make a decision here to try and fight this army, or just try and base trade. But at this point, it's not going to work, considering the hatchery on the right side is now done for Dongregu. Dongregu is just crushing through TT1's expansion. The TT1 may just be too far behind at this point to really recover, but uh, we're seeing uh, this Colossus is going to get picked off by Mutas for free. Oh, unfortunate rally on that Colossus, so he goes down as well. Look at the parts just scatter and bounce all over the ground. Uh, here come the Stalkers pressing up here once again, but that's a lot of Zerglings, a lot of Mutas. It should be fairly easy for Dongregu to clean up from this point. And TT1 has no knowledge of this base over here. He is clearing out creep, doing the best he possibly can, but his mining is just really bad. It's about one-third that of Dongregu's. Here comes the main engagement. As we can see, the Mutas and Roaches are all pressing up here. Nice force fields here so they can zone out the Roaches. They just burrow underneath the force field zone and come right in the Stalker's face. Uh, yeah, this is just too much stuff here out of Dongregu. We should be seeing a good game here very soon as uh, Dongregu is just crushing through this force of TT1. And there it is. Good game. Replay complete, as we can see here on the right side. So Dongregu really punishing TT1 once again. Uh, and it was just because TT1 had too much space to cover here at his natural expansion. Uh, really unfortunate times where TT1 got caught off guard, got his warp prism caught. Uh, uh, Dongregu researched Burrow and Burrowed his drones. So the harassment did nothing. So TT1 was just kind of out of avenues, and Dongregu shut him down at every turn. So very fantastic play there out of Dongregu. We'll go ahead and move on to game three. Watch me for that one. Uh, it could be a match point here for Dong Regu, or we could go on to either four or five games. We'll find out in the next one. Stay tuned and join me in just a moment.